Okay, we're back. So here we are, we're going through solutions on the mock exam. I've done questions 1 through 12 in previous videos. In this one, we're going to go through questions 13 and 14. So let's go through it. Question 13, perform the addition or subtraction and simplify. Ugh. Fraction problems, Ugh. these are the bane of many students' existences. So, so what we're going to do here is we're going we're gonna to make sure when we add fractions, we've got to make sure that we've got common denominators. This one's got variables in the denominators, so how do we make sure they're common? Is we multiply them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to say that we want each fraction to have this denominator. It's the product of this and this. Okay, there's no repeated factors in either denominator. The left one does not have a factor of x minus 3. The right one does not have a factor of x. It has a term x, but not a factor, not multiplied in there. So because of that, we can just take the product of these two things, and that's our common denominator. Okay. So the first fraction is going to have that denominator, and so is the second. But if we want to force these things to have that denominator, we also need to change the numerators in order to account for that. So this first fraction was 2 over x. There's no x minus 3 factor in there. So what do we do? Is we multiply it by 1. And what does that 1 look like? It looks like the factor that's missing. x minus 3 over x minus 3. If we multiply on top and bottom by that missing factor, we're going to guarantee that the denominator is the same as what we're looking for. And we're also going to guarantee that we have not changed the numerical value of whatever 2 over x is. Okay, we've just multiplied by 1. So now I'm going to multiply this out. This is 2x minus 6. Okay, I just distributed the 2 times the x minus 3. I'm not going to distribute the denominator just yet, although I could. I don't think we're going to just yet. On the right fraction, there is no factor of x in the denominator, so we need to put it there by multiplying by 1, which means multiplying by that missing factor on top and bottom. So that gives us x on top, x times 1. Okay. So now we're going to do what you do with any two fractions in addition when they have the same denominator. You can write it as one fraction with that denominator and then you can add the two numerators together. 2x minus 6 plus x. Okay. And that gives us 3x minus 6 over x times x plus 3, excuse me, minus 3. And this is pretty close. If you wrote this as your final solution, that's, that's pretty darn close. Uh, but that's not quite it because the instructions say to simplify. So what can we simplify here? We can pull out a factor up top of 3, which gives us 3 times x minus 2 divided by x times x minus 3. That, I would say, is the simplest form. Um, but the other one is still pretty simple. Okay, so this this is the fully, I would say, simplify, although that's open to interpretation, the fully simplified solution. And I think with that, we can move on to the next problem.
All right, so the next problem, 14, find all real solutions of the equation. Okay, this one is not so bad. It might, it might look a little difficult from the beginning, but it's really not so bad. So 2x minus 3 squared plus 4 is 13. Let's go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. We're going to try and isolate the x on one side. And because we've got it underneath the square here, let's get the square by itself on the side. The reason I say that is because we can square root things then. We can get rid of that square by square rooting. Um, but it, it would be dangerous to do so without first making that square the only thing on one side. So let's, let's do that. So we get 2x minus 3 squared is 13 minus 4, which is 9. Okay. Now we're going to square root both sides. So I'm going to write it like this. Square root both sides. Okay. On the left side, we have 2x minus 3. On the right side, this is where I'm going to put the plus or minus. So we have either this is equal to 3, or we have 2x minus 3 is negative 3. Okay. So the, the reason is this. Right? This number here, it, it's just something. It's just some number. And when you square it, you get 9. There are two numbers which you can square to get 9, and I've written them here, 3 and negative 3. That's why I've written this twice, because there's, there's a possibility here that x, whatever it is, when you plug it in, gives you positive 3. Or there's the second possibility of when you plug in x, you get negative 3. So we're going to find out what those two x's are, and then we're going to uh, we're going to have our two solutions. Okay, so uh, let's solve the top one first. So not this one yet. The top one, two x minus three. Let's add the three to both sides. We get two x is six. Okay, and then that me means that x, if we divide both sides by two is 3. And that should be it. If we plug that in, we get, what do we get? We get 6 minus 3, so 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 equals 13. We're good. There's one. It's one solution right there. Okay, now we're going to work on this other one. What do we do first? We add the 3 over. 2x is 0. That means that x is 0. 2 times something is 0. That something must be 0. Better be 0. So let's we can check it just to verify. 0 minus 3. So it's negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. 13 equals 13. We've got it. Here are the real solutions. OK. So that's questions 13 and 14. I'll come back with another video on the next couple questions. Uh, and again, I hope this helps. So I'll see you in the next one.